Welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. We appreciate you stopping by, and I am so happy to bring to you today Phil Smith, who has been a serial entrepreneur for over 20 years. He sold over three companies, and for three years in a row, he he's made Inc. 5000's list of the fastest growing private company in the country. Phil has always had a heart for helping businesses, big and small, solve problems and make money in new and interesting ways. He has consulted for large companies like IBM, Intel, AT&T, and HP, and continues to work with small and local businesses as well. Phil has helped businesses generate over $5 billion in total revenue, and has partnered with Kevin Harrington an original shark on the hit TV show, Shark Tank. Thank you, Phil, for joining us. We truly appreciate you. Uh, Thank you for having me. This is great. So 20 years. (laughs) That is a long time. So how did you end up in this in in this arena? It's crazy. You know, I I started my first business in 1998. So obviously it's been over 20 years now. And, you know, at the time I was in college and, you know, I I realized over the last, you know, 25 years now that business is mainly about timing, just got to be in the right place at the right time. And of course, you know, a lot of times we can't control that. Right. But I was offered to start up a web hosting business back then And I just took advantage of it. So yes, you got to be in the right place at the right time, but you also have to take advantage of opportunities that present themselves to you. So just to make a long story short, I started that business in 1998 through a lot of struggles and figuring things out and not really having a lot of people around me to to push me in the right direction or mentor me or whatever. Uh, Me and my partner just figured it out and we ended up selling that business in 2005. It's a long seven years, but I learned a lot. I learned to never quit. I learned that if you just keep pushing forward, you know, you'll figure it out. Even if you have to pivot and go into a different direction, that's okay. Failing's okay. Just fail quick and move on. Don't let it linger where you put yourself into bankruptcy. I've seen companies do that over the years. Uh, But to go from there, what happened was after 05 in 2006, I decided that I wanted to work from home. And this is, you know, way before, obviously, the craziness that we're dealing with today uh, with what's going on, but we had a, about 200 employees at the time in, a, in the web hosting company, and I just never wanted to deal with another employee again. <laughs> so <laughs> I told myself, I just want to go home and just make as much money as I can, and just I'll just figure it out. And I had that mindset, and that's another thing I've learned is that you need the right mindset to become an entrepreneur and understand what it takes to be successful. So once I got into 2006, I started up a consulting business, helping companies. That's when I worked with the IBM and the HP, Intel, et cetera, Uh, did very, very large deals. And I ended up selling that company and getting acquired in 2010 with a guy named Jim Estill. Jim Estill was one of the first investors in BlackBerry, uh, which is also called Research in Motion back in the day, which clearly isn't doing anything today. But he made about a half a billion dollars off that one investment. And he also took his own business from zero to two billion in sales and sold his own company. So this guy was an absolute beast. And what I've also learned over the years is put yourself in the right room with the right people. Because when you do that, it accelerates your career. It accelerates whatever you're doing a lot faster. So he acquired me 2010. We ended up selling that business again in 2012. And after that, I went back home. I did go to an office for two years because I knew that was the right thing to do to work with those guys because you got to hang out with the people with the money if you want money, right? (laughs) So after that, I uh, got into the lead generation business in 2014. And that's what I've been doing ever since. And uh, it's been going, uh, going really good since then. Wow. 
Wow, I remember the Blackberry. I remember when it came out. <laughs> I had a Blackberry. <laughs> that, there you go. that was the office phone. Yes, it was more corporate, more business use. Yes, absolutely. So lead generation. Okay, that is like the top thing that most entrepreneurs need to get a grip on us for yes. lack of a better word because most, most important thing for a business yes absolutely so how do businesses really launch a good lead generation effort yeah so the big the biggest mistake i see people or companies make is that they don't really take control of their entire funnel and what i mean by that is you have the part where you drive traffic to your website, right? Or whatever you're promoting. Then you want to obviously generate those leads for whatever you're promoting. And then, of course, you have the long-term marketing strategy, your email marketing, your SMS marketing, whatever phone call sales you're doing, right? Whatever the sales process is for that business. What I've seen is that the average company will concentrate, let's just say, running Facebook ads or Google ads or YouTube ads or just any type of advertising to their website, but they're not concentrating on conversion optimization, not concentrating on monetizing their data. They're not monetize, they're not concentrating on the long-term strategies with their email and SMS. I, I seen companies that say, Oh, yeah, I sent a couple of emails. We try to sell them. If it doesn't work, we kind of move on. But they don't realize that you should be you know, nurturing that lead for months, even years, because you just never know what's going to happen down the road. Uh, we actually had to throw our own events. And I've had people, when I first started doing this stuff, really kind of like after 06, 07, 08, and I started billing and, you know, a following back then, I've had people show up in my events just in the last couple of years and say, I've been following you since 2008. Now that's a long sales cycle, but it shows that you just got to keep building, building, building and keep you know, nurturing those leads because you just never know what's going to happen. Absolutely. And I noticed that you are one man band. So <laughs> yes. for solopreneurs, that's a lot of effort for one okay. person. So how do you accomplish, you know, keeping in a consistent nurturing uh, format in your business if you're just one person? It's all about using technology automation as much as possible. And that that's the thing with me is I got really, really good at just automating as much as possible. And I also do a lot of selling online to the masses. So of course, I'm one person. I can't sit on the phone all day long myself. So I, I've gotten really good at learning how to basically sell things through videos, through webinars, through whatever and getting them to pay me for my services without ever actually talking to somebody. Now, listen, of course, you know, I am a one employee company, but of course I have people that help me do things. I can't do everything. For a while I did do everything by myself, but I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I do need to now get some help. So I have you know consultants and people that obviously provide certain services that help me out. I even did hire a third party sales organization back in 2018. And I'm literally right now in the process of getting rid of them and building another team, quote unquote, in-house. Well, I'll have more control over them, but it's actually still being ran by another company, but it's just somebody that I have a really, really good relationship with mm -hmm. and they are doing things my way essentially. Uh, but that's basically my going forward. I am having more control over things instead of spreading it out too, too much because you lose control. And once you lose control, then it really screws up. So I've learned the hard way with a lot of things myself, but I, uh, I still, you know, you know, it's funny with the one employee concept. I have a book coming out called the eight figure solopreneur. I got into Inc magazine, the actual physical magazine about making the Inc. 5,000. This year should actually be the fifth year now that I that I make that list. So I'll find out in, a, in probably a month or two. And it's almost been like its own marketing side to my to me personally. Like, oh, this guy's still one employee company. Look what he's done. So now I'm like, oh crap, I can't get any employees now. <laughs> It'll screw up my marketing. So, but yeah, so it's it's funny. So, but it it really is like I just don't want to deal. The reason why I personally don't want to deal with employees, I I and it, and it's. A really bad thing to say, but I feel like when you deal with employees and people with an employee mindset, mm -hmm. and of course, this isn't a blanket statement on everybody, 
But when I look at it, it's like, are you just dealing with somebody that most likely just wants to make as much money as possible and work the least amount as possible? Because I know a lot of those people and a lot of them I actually am friends with. And I think I, I, I think for myself, if one of my friends, I go, wow, you're I can't imagine the guy that's managing you because it's a large company. But I'm like, your manager must hate you because I would hate <laughs> you because he's one of those people that just gets out of work every day. But so, but when you work with consultants, guess what? You can get rid of them at any point in time. There's nothing that, you know, they can't go anywhere and complain. There's no, uh, you know, unemployment. You know what I mean? It's just, hey, you're your own business. I use your services. I don't need them anymore. But it's been, it's been interesting on how this one employee thing is kind of taken its own. It's like its own animal now with a lot of people that uh, know who I am and what I do. Yes, yes, yes. And I, and I can understand the employee mentality is totally different than a consultant. Mentality yes, because they are an entrepreneur at the end of the day, that consultant. Absolutely. And they are motivated to do the best because they're representing their company, their own company. Right. So, they yes, can. yes. Wow. So let's talk a little bit about some ways of monetizing your leads that can increase your profit. Yeah. So one thing I will say, the lead generation business I, I started learning it in 2014. And when I first started, I was just generating leads off Facebook. So I was running Facebook ads, generating leads for $18. They were specifically business loan leads. And I was selling it for 60. That's how I actually kind of entered the industry. And like we said before, it's all about timing. I just happened to be running Facebook ads at the right time because they were very cheap at the time and they were very valuable. If I started literally a year later, I would never have been profitable because literally at the end of 2015, one year later, that $18 lead was now $70. But because I had a year head start, I was generating for 18, selling for 60. Time goes on. I see the 18 was 20, 22, 25. Like every month, it just kept going up. Mm -hmm. So what I started trying to figure out, I'm like, well, what else can I do with these leads? I need to figure out another way to monetize them. And then I started selling them off to a credit repair company, a business credit monitoring company. And I started just finding other companies that can monetize these leads. And then that just skyrocketed my profit margin. So then I realized this, I'm like, wow, this is actually like its own marketing strategy. The average company doesn't do this. I mean, if you actually go to amazon.com, you will see they have link outs to other sites, Best Buy, Walmart. They actually all do it. They all monetize their leads as many different ways possible. Amazon's a great um, a great example of a company that takes one lead and has like 10 different services to sell that lead. So it's the same concept. They're just not all my services, right? Mm -hmm. So I would generate that lead and just give them five different things to potentially buy or be interested in and that those companies would pay me for that for that lead so okay. that concept i spoke at a war room mastermind event uh, about four years ago and i didn't really know it was one of the first times i ever spoke at an event like this war room mastermind it's not around anymore the partners split up but you had to generate at least a million dollars a year to be in it so you're dealing with real not like not real entrepreneurs, it's entrepreneurs that are obviously more successful, about 250 of them. And I didn't know what to talk about. And like, everyone talks about Facebook marketing, Google and whatever, and social media. I wanted to talk about something different. So I talked about the concept of monetizing your existing data or customer base into other services, even if it's a service that's not yours. I just explained that about 20 minutes and I'm getting off the stage and I see this guy, Michael Perella, who uh, owned I Love Kickboxing at the time, which is was a franchise. I'm not sure if they're still around. But what happened was he just started, he's a big guy. You can't miss him, right? So he's walking. It gets up. First guy that got up, walking, walking, walking. And I just see him a corner of my eye. And I'm just assuming he's walking out. But he just keeps getting closer and closer and closer to me. But he's like a bull. You know, he's like, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, did I say something? Is this guy going to punch me in the face? Because he's not one of those guys that you can just walk up to and feel comfortable. You're like, I think he's going to kick my butt. So he, he just walks up to me, goes, Bill, Michael Perella, man, that was amazing. We got to talk. I generate about 90,000 leads a month and I never even thought about this. And I was blown away. I was like, are you kidding me right now? So then all of a sudden about 20 people throughout that entire event came up to me, you know, separately and like, hey, Phil, we need to talk, we need to talk. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. One of the guys that heard me speak at that event, and this is going back to, I think like 19, 2019, 
literally a couple of months ago, I was in San Diego and I, I saw this guy, Brad, and we're at the bar and he goes, Hey man, remember when you spoke at war room and you talked about monetizing data? I'm like, yeah, he goes, man, it always stuck with me. I finally started doing it last year and it literally has added seven figures in revenue to my business. I'm like, dude, that's amazing. So you're paying the bar tab, right? So, <laughs> so basically a lot of business owners just don't realize it. It's such an easy concept, but just nobody really, a lot, and I say nobody, but most companies just don't even think about it. It's not even on their radar. And the multiple people now over the years that I've said that to have come back to me over time. Another guy in San Diego at a, a conference, I gave him that advice. A year later at the same conference, I ran into him. He goes, man, your advice is amazing. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I started monetizing my leads and whatever, it changed everything. So it's, that that's just a simple concept. You just got to figure it out what works for, you know, that specific business. Wow. And that is something that most people, entrepreneurs do not think about. They yep. basically want to market their stuff to their lead, but not necessarily sharing it with somebody else that might be a better fit. Right. You know, it's funny, like I, I run one campaign for, for one of my uh, services that I sell and we only convert, you know, anywhere between two and 3%. So that means 97 leads out of a hundred do not buy anything from me. So why not just promote something else to them or try to sell that lead off to somebody else? Like what, what's the, why do nothing? It's not right. like it's cheap. I mean, these leads cost me $17 a piece. You know what I mean? So that's 97 times $17, right? I mean, that's what I'm wasting, you know, quote unquote wasting, but might as well try to do something with them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, if people want to reach out to you, how do they do so? My main site is the easiest way, just Philip F as in Frank Smith.com. That's it. You know, uh, it's been a, uh, I don't really do a lot of organic marketing. I don't really have a huge following. I've never been good at that because I just do paid marketing. It's way easier to just pay for to pay for advertising and generate leads. But yeah, my site's the uh, easiest way. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, do you train? Just ask that. <laughs> yeah, we. I have some services where we have you know, essentially it's like an educational type business, which I really kind of hate using that word like courses and, and gurus and whatever. But we, we actually provide real services where we, uh, what I have, basically what I've done is I partnered with a lot of companies that provide services to the people that come through me. And that's just the smartest way for me to do it because I don't want to do it. Right. So, right. so I went and got the best of breed for certain things. Like I, I don't have a sales floor to do business loans or mortgages or, you know, do lead generation, stuff like that. So I've literally been spending the last nine years building up all these partners that would come into my world and say, listen, I'll go out and sell these services, but I need you to actually provide them. There's certain things, of course, that I personally do. We, I run masterminds and we do a lot of stuff, but I do the things that I like to do. And I let other people do the things I don't like to do, <laughs> and but but they're actually good at it. And I've been that's one thing I've been really good at. And I learned this in the mid two thousands when I did do those large deals at IBM and AT and T. Is that I'm really good at bringing people together and knowing what everyone's good at and kind of forming this um, you know community that we've built uh, currently uh, in the lead generation business. But I literally I've actually worked with people that I've taught them in business. And obviously, listen, I don't take it. I, I don't take credit for other people's success. Sure. If you want to give me a little credit for just showing you the right direction, but everybody has to build their own business. They got to put the work in. Yeah. But I have had people that tell me that I've changed their life that have reached seven figures a month in revenue. I mean, it's crazy, but it's definitely really, really, really rewarding when you hear that and see it. It's great. Um, and obviously we just keep pushing forward, get the information out there and let people do what they want with it. Yes. And it's a, it's a smart way to do it, you know, because you're right. Most of us have a database of leads and maybe a fourth has really bought anything <laughs> from us. Exactly. hundred percent. So, I mean, it really does make sense. And it is definitely something for entrepreneurs to think about. 
Yes, absolutely. And I mean, now that you're talking about it, you got my light bulbs <laughs> twirling. Because <laughs> I've got a big, pretty big uh, mailing list and, you know, not all of them buy anything from me. Exactly. Yeah. I, I get Great story. So I'm walking out of a hotel in Chicago and I've been trying to get in touch with this company that they're a, a lender, they're a business loan lender. And I've been trying to get in touch with them for about six months. And I saw that the guy, Anthony, was calling me and I was so excited because I knew he was calling me to place an order. So I pick up the phone, simple, $500. Uh, first order, $500. He bought what's, what's called an aged lead. So you have leads that are real time. Like it just comes in today. Yeah. And then you have leads that are a month old, six months old, a year old, whatever. So he was interested in the aged leads at the time. And I was selling for a dollar a piece. So 500 leads, $500. And I was like, yes, because I knew they'd be successful. And I knew they were big. So they buy a lot. And literally 500 lead order turned into another 500 lead order, turned into 2000 leads to 5,000, you know, et cetera. And then he just called me up an another day and he goes, all right, man, everything's really working out well. Like, what can we do here? And he goes, uh, how many leads do you have? I'm like, about 400,000. He goes, I'll take them all, but I'll do it over the next six months. And literally over the next six months, he paid me over $400,000. And then they started buying real time leads for me. So overall, that was over, you know, at least a half a million dollars in business just from this one company. But the majority of it was just data sitting on my computer. Wow. You know what I mean? Like that's all it was doing. And that was worth four hundred thousand dollars to this company. And they made a killing. So they didn't make any money, you know. And that age data has made me a ton of money over the years. And um that's why people just don't realize how valuable that stuff is, you know, as long as you find the right company that can monetize it. Yes. And I put plenty of leads in my in my career of entrepreneurship. I've bought plenty of leads over, over mm -hmm. time. And, yep. uh, you know, so I do know the buying leads is a big business. Mm hmm. You know, so, yes, because I've I mean, I've I've done it myself. So. How did you end up with Kevin Harrington? <laughs> so when I started getting into the quote unquote course business in 2017, and this is exactly how it started going back to exactly everything we're talking about. So I'm generating all these business loan leads at the time, sometimes, you know, a thousand a day. I think the most I ever did in a day was about 1300. So I'm collecting all these leads, getting into the end of 2017. And I go to myself, it's actually July, July of 17. I decided to pull the trigger. And I go to myself, I'm going to sell a course, but I'm going to sell a course to my existing lead flow. These are all people either want to start a business or have a business. And what I realized is that the average business owner that would came to me wasn't really a business owner. They were really a startup or they want to start a business. And I started realizing that they don't really care what they do. They just want to do something. So all I did was I created a service designed for my existing leads that I already had these, you know, half a million leads that were sitting around at the time or whatever amount it was at the time. And what happened was we, I started just, I created a course on how to start a business becoming a business loan broker. So, and the reason why I did that, because I, that's exactly who I was selling my leads to. So I said, you know how you found me? You found me because you're looking for a business loan. This is what we do. And you can make money doing the same exact thing. So I created a course and literally within a few months, I made about two hundred fifty dollars to $300,000 wow. just by selling a $1,000 course to all these people. And that's how the business got off the ground and got started. So this is now going into the end of 17. And then I'm like, okay, well, this is actually starting to work. But who's Phil Smith? Nobody knows who I am. So why don't I try to team up with somebody that's larger than me. So what do I do? I just think about Shark Tank. I hit up everybody, you know, that was ever on the show. <laughs> Damon John, Barbara Corcoran, and Kevin Harrington get back to me. <clears throat> I ended up paying $9,000 to be interviewed by Kevin Harrington in January of 2018. But the reason why I did it was because I'd be in the same room as him and I wanted to pitch him. Now, because of me selling my business to that investment fund, Jim Estill, back in 2010, I learned how the investment world works. But what I actually did was I went to Kevin. I said, hey, Kevin, listen, I'm generating $2 million a year in revenue, I all, but I don't want any money from you. I actually want to just pay you to use your name and to work with you. And he looked at me. He goes, okay. 
<laughs> so, you know, because these guys are just so used to people asking for money. I'm like, I want to give you money. So that was my pitch. I'm like, let me just change it up a little bit. And he goes, you know what? Okay, let's talk. You know, here's so-and-so. I got to talk to this guy, Mark Timms. And then that started the conversation. That was January of 18. We didn't close a deal until September of 18. Uh, but it happened. And uh, that's how it, it all, you know, Damon, John, again, I talked to them. I talked to Barbara. It just didn't make sense for Barbara because she was so in real estate. And then uh, the Damon, John thing, it kind of just started up and then kind of just fizzled out, mainly because Kevin's son, Brian, actually lives like 20 minutes from me. And I just felt like, okay, this, I can make this work. You know, he's right down the road. That makes more sense. And I became friends with him. Like we go play golf, we travel, whatever. So it's really, it's kind of what it turned into now over the last God going on five years now. Wow. And, uh, and it's been, uh, it's been really cool, but, and of course now we do a lot of other things together. So we, you know, they have other services I make money with. I got services they make money with. We've done other businesses together. We, before COVID, we were doing a lot of events, like 200 person events, uh, kind of like pitch events to help people raise money. So mm -hmm. we've done a lot of cool stuff over the years. And, uh, but again, having that type of stuff, like it's a pay to play model, right? So yeah. that's what I've learned. I'm part of Damon John's rise nation mastermind right now. That's $50,000 a year, but I get to hang out with Damon for six days a year, which is sounds crazy. Spend, spend that much money, but the amount of access that you have and also the other people in that room that are also willing to pay that money. I want to meet them. Yeah. Right. And now because actually I was there, what happened was Damon came out with a book called this, right? And at the first event in San Diego, he goes, hey, anybody buys 200 of my books, I'll come to your office. I'll have dinner with you one-on-one. -on -one. We'll hang out, whatever you need from me. So what did I do? I guess what? I bought the books, right? And my friend actually has a nonprofit that helps kids not get abducted. So I donated the books to him. And I'm going to do dinner with Damon actually in Vegas in a few weeks uh, just to hang out with him for two hours, you know? So that's what you need to do, right? You need to put yourself in the right room with the right people. Yes, yes. That people that can get you to where you're trying to get to or bring exactly. other people to you because exactly. money attracts money. Yep. It's all about who you know. It's all about networking. Actually, Damon said it in one video I saw. He goes, networking is the fastest way to grow a business. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And you want to be able to walk into a room and people know who you are. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah know so exactly many, uh, nobody, nobody knew who I was. So, quick story on that, right? So I'm in San Diego at a conference. Me and this guy I was with, we're sitting at a table in the restaurant at the Marriott in, a, in the harbor of San Diego, the Marriott Marquis. And nobody talks to us because why would they, right? We're there for about an hour. Kevin shows up with his son and it's like three or four other guys. They sit at the table with us. And all of a sudden, within a minute, there's like 20 people surrounding us. Now everybody wants to know my name. <laughs> Who are you? Hey, what's going on, Phil Smith? You're like, how'd you get at this table? I'm like, I'm at the cool kids table now, you know? So, but that's really what it's all about. And then through Kevin, what I, I started dropping his name everywhere. I would go to celebrity golf outings. And you know, obviously there'll be celebrities there. And I walk around I'm like, hey man, this I work with Kevin Harrington. We're looking to maybe do something with some celebrities. Are you interested? Uh, you know, of course, I'd always mention Shark Tank or whatever. And they did just be giving me their phone number. Like, you know, call me directly. Call me directly. Yeah, I literally <laughs> have like so many celebrities' numbers, direct numbers, uh, just because of dropping Kevin's name. And it helps me open doors and obviously, and just it's it's crazy. But of course, now it's also opened up me as as a target of someone to talk to from just random people. Hey, Phil, I see you're partner with Kevin, blah, 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 blah. You know, so I'm like, all right, how do I make money off this? And that's actually what happened was back in 2019, I was at an event with Kevin. It was his, you know, he was speaking and I watched how everybody reacted to him. It was about 350 people there. And he got off the stage and everybody wanted a piece. So on that drive home is when I said to them, like, guys, why don't you do your own events? Yeah, it's not something we thought about it, whatever. Blah. So I'm like, what if I did it for you? And I got all the butts in the seats. I'm like, listen, if you want to do it, go ahead. So we did our first event in October, like literally like three months later, October in Vegas at the Bellagio. We did our first event uh, together. That was more like this event, uh, you know, like a pitch event to help businesses. And it was started cranking. We did 
Uh, that one, then we did Orlando three months later, January of 20. And then we started doing more in New York. And then all of a sudden COVID hit and that whole thing plummeted, obviously. But we just started kind of getting back into the swing of things with that. Uh, but so we'll, we'll see where it goes. I actually have an event in three weeks in Vegas myself, but I do an event about every other month my, myself uh, without Kevin. Um, he's attached to it, but he's not physically there. Oh, so. uh, okay. Okay. Wow. Wow, Phil. This has been really, really amazing. Uh, you have dropped some really, really good nuggets for us. And, you know, and I know people, especially entrepreneurs who have all these leads <laughs> that aren't buying from you. Now you have another way to monetize them. 100%. Absolutely. So again, how do people connect with you? Yep. Just go to philipfsmith.com. Easiest way. Uh, you can see what we do. Just fill out the form and uh, we'll get back to you. That's it. Absolutely. Well, I will definitely be going, jumping over to your website. And uh, I'm looking forward to more collaborations as well going forward because people need to hear things more than one time. A lot yeah. of times before they have their aha moment. <laughs> nope. So we are definitely wanting you back on the show and to talk more about lead generation. So thank you so, so much. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ada Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskin. We hope you enjoyed the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.